Dez Bryant was a misunderstood, brash, and downright dominant wide receiver in his prime. But while his love for the game is what propelled him into the spotlight as one of the best wide receivers of the last decade, on the other hand, it also made him a villain in the eyes of many due to the countless viral videos, injuries, and in his own words, staying true to himself. And sadly, it all led to the demise of the X Factor. Here is the rise and fall of Dez Bryant. Road to the NFL. Dez Bryant got his start to life with some unique circumstances when he was born to a 15-year-old mother and a 40-something-year-old father. Circumstances that should have never came to be. And by the time Dez was eight years old, his mother Angela had already had three kids and was struggling to take care of them on a minimum wage salary. So she did the only thing she knew would make money quickly when she turned to selling drugs. And shortly after, she was busted for her crimes and sentenced to four years in prison. During this stretch, little Dez was sent to live with his father, where his love for the game of football began. Fast forward to his high school years when he relocated to Lufkin, Texas where he attended Lufkin High School and for the Panthers, Dez was a two-sport athlete competing in multiple track and field events while dominating on the gridiron. His rare combination of size, speed, and strength allowed him to dominate opponents and lead his team to the 5A Texas State playoffs in back-to-back -back seasons. He finished his high school career with a ridiculous 101 receptions, 2,232 receiving yards, and 37 touchdowns. But due to some off-the-field issues, multiple big-time colleges strayed away from Dez after he was labeled as an uncontrollable hothead by some high school recruiting experts at the time. But his talent was undeniable, and he was still regarded as a four-star recruit by Rivals.com, holding offers from schools like Texas A&M, Oklahoma State, and Texas Tech. Dez ultimately committed to play football for Mike Gundy and the Oklahoma State Cowboys, mainly due to their wide receiver coach Gunter Brewer's instrumental development of Randy Moss while he was at Marshall. During his career at Oklahoma State, Dez Bryant was a day one starter and quickly impressed the college football world with his freakish abilities because he did everything for the Cowboys. And Oklahoma State fans quickly learned that every time number one touched the ball, he was adding six to the scoreboard. Punt it to him, six. Third and long, six. Red zone, six. I mean, he truly was a touchdown machine. So much so that in his sophomore season, he scored three or more touchdowns in four of the 13 games he appeared in, making his everlasting mark on every game. Game. He was widely regarded as the best wide receiver in the country, and opponents hated to match up against him. But even though he endured much success at Oklahoma State, it came with its drawbacks as well. The first was when he met primetime Deion Sanders during the offseason going in his junior year, and he was invited by the Hall of Famer to work out with him at his stunning 112-acre home just outside of Dallas, Texas. And only a fool would turn down learning from one of the greatest cornerbacks the game has ever seen. During the workout, though, it was rumored that Deion's former agent and longtime friend Eugene Parker was there and that he met and spoke to the Oklahoma State receiver. And while this is legal now due to the new NIL rules, in 2009, this was a clear NCAA violation. And somehow, the NCAA caught wind of this meeting and brought the young star in to investigate. And sadly, during this investigation, Dez decided not to fully disclose what happened at Dion's house, which only made matters worse for him. And after three games into his junior season, he was ruled ineligible for the remainder of the 2009 season for failing to fully disclose his interaction with Deion Sanders to the NCAA. At the time, this was the worst possible outcome for Dez as he was easily considered the best receiver in college football and a dark horse to win the Heisman Trophy before his suspension. He finished his career in Stillwater with an insane 147 receptions, 2,425 receiving yards, and 32 total touchdowns in only two full seasons. Just imagine if he was able to play his junior season. After being ruled ineligible for the remaining of his junior year, Dez Bryant officially declared for the 2010 NFL Draft, and from there, he started to train for the NFL Combine, essentially getting a head start on all the other prospects. So everyone had high expectations for the former All-American. And sadly, at the NFL Combine, Dez didn't have his best performance at all. He reportedly showed up with a 10-man entourage, and his ego was so big that many bystanders thought he was an NFL player already. But to make matters even worse, he left his cleats in the hotel room and had to be supplied with new ones. And as crazy as all this sounds, this happened before they even started testing. And the testing wasn't much better either, when he produced worse numbers than many teams expected. And it wasn't just the on the field stuff either, the interviews as well. Heading into the 2010 draft, several teams didn't even have a draftable grade for Dez anymore, due to his undeveloped life skills that were discovered during the interview process. So when the Dallas Cowboys traded up with the New England Patriots to select him in the first round, it was a head scratcher move to everyone. The Rise 
After signing a five-year, $12 million contract with the Cowboys, owner Jerry Jones announced that he wanted Dez to don the historic number 88, a number that was previously worn by two Hall of Fame wide receivers in Michael Irvin and Drew Pearson, which added more pressure to the shoulders of the first round pick. But Dez was ready for the spotlight. In his NFL debut against the Washington Redskins, he set the Cowboys franchise record for the most receptions in a player's first game when he hauled in eight. And from there, he quickly established himself as the X-Factor for the Cowboys. Whenever they needed a game-changing play, Dez was right there with a much-needed touchdown. Until week 13, when he suffered a fractured ankle and was placed on injured reserve, prematurely ending his rookie season. And while this was the first injury of his young career, they would play a big role throughout the rest of his career. After recovering from his ankle injury, Dez Bryant's childhood dream had finally come true when he was officially named a starter for his favorite team growing up. And from there, Dez quickly established ascended into one of, if not the best red zone threat in the entire NFL, as fans frequently witnessed his signature touchdown celebration. His numbers continued to improve over the years, unlike the Cowboys win total that remained at 8 till 2014 when they both were tops in the league. And at this point, Dez was arguably a top 5 wide receiver in the entire league. And the amazing part about all his accomplishments up until this point was the fact that he was dealing with some grueling injuries the entire time. Broken fingers, a sprained MCL and a back injury that reportedly immobilized him at times, according to some cowboy insiders, which is absolutely insane. The X Factor. Entering the final year of his rookie contract, Dez had the most productive season of his entire career, being selected to his second Pro Bowl in back-to-back -back seasons and was even named a first-team All-Pro. For the first time in his career, his production finally translated to wins as the Cowboys made the playoffs for the first time since 2009. In his playoff debut, Dez Bryant was largely unproductive due to the Detroit Lions blanketing him with double coverage all game. But due to the attention the Lions paid to Dez, they neglected everyone else which allowed the Cowboys to storm back in the second half to win 24-20. In the divisional round, America's team will face off against the Green Bay Packers. And this game is going to forever be known for what occurred late in the game on 4th and 2, when Dez Bryant bobbled the ball as he stretched out to the one-yard line trying to gain every inch for his team. But after the referee initially marked the ball at the one-yard line, Packers head coach Mike McCarthy challenged the call, which led to the play being reviewed and overturned. The ref stated that it was an incomplete pass and the reasoning for it being overturned was that a receiver, even though they fully possess the ball, they must maintain it through the entire catch process, meaning that once Dez hit the ground, the ball couldn't move. And this controversial call will forever be synonymous with Dez Bryant as fans can't help but to think about what could have been. Following the season, on March 3rd of 2015, the Dallas Cowboys decided to franchise tag Dez Bryant in order to prevent him from becoming an unrestricted free agent so that the two sides could come to terms on a long-term deal and on July 15th of the same year they did just that when they agreed upon a massive five-year 70 million dollar contract that included 45 million guaranteed the most by a wide receiver in NFL history at the time but sadly after this contract extension he would battle more injuries than opponents over the next few years a fractured foot in 2015 a hairline fracture in his knee in 2016 constantly kept Dez on the sidelines and by the time he was healthy again new stars were emerging for the Dallas Cowboys when the rookie tandem of Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott were leading the Cowboys to their best season in decades. In the playoffs, Dez Bryant had easily his best performance of the 2016 season against the Green Bay Packers, racking up nine receptions, 132 yards, and two touchdowns. And sadly for Dez Bryant, this would be one of the last great games he had for the Dallas Cowboys. The Fall in 2017, Dez Bryant was a shell of his former self and was no longer the dominant number one receiver he once was. Instead, he was more like a big reliable possession receiver. And due to this sentiment around the league, Cowboys wanted him to take a pay cut and he refused. So at the end of the 2017 season, the Dallas Cowboys released their all-time leader in receiving touchdowns. And at this point in Dez Bryant's career, everything started to go south rather quickly. On November 7th, 2018, nine weeks into the 2018 season, season, Dez Bryant agreed to a one-year, $1.2 million contract with the New Orleans Saints. And just two days after signing that contract, he tore his Achilles in practice, effectively ending his season without ever playing a single snap for the Saints. And after sitting out for an entire 2019 season to rehab his injury and train for a comeback, he was signed by the Baltimore Ravens just days before Halloween. And throughout the 2020 season, he battled the virus and never was able to show all the work he had put in during the offseason due to the Ravens' run for 
first offense. Present day. As of today, Dez Bryant is a free agent and has stated multiple times that he would love a reunion with the Dallas Cowboys. Should the Cowboys reunite with their all-time leader in receiving touchdowns? Let us know down in the comments what you think. Thank you all for watching, and I'm out. Tell me why they sleeping on me, on me, on me, on me, on me.